Hello. I expected you sooner. Maybe you better sit down. This may be my last drink for some time, and I intend to finish it. Maybe you ought to have a drink, too. George. Uh, scotch for my friend here. I'd better make it a double. He's going to need it. And the tide's going out here, too. Two doubles, Mr. Kenwick, right away. No bourbon, George. Of course, Mr. Kenwick. So you, uh, you worked your little scheme. And all I've got to do now is talk. Mind you, I don't have to. There's nothing to stop me from walking out of here and catching the 1215 right back to London. Then you'd have no case. Beverly's death would remain an accident. But we both know that that's just what I'm not going to do. Now. And why? Because I'm tired of life? Or could it be that I'm just as anxious as you that they put a rope around Carol's beautiful neck? It's kind of difficult to believe there was a time when I'd never even heard of Carol Forrest. But six weeks ago, I was just a hack novelist trying to beat some life into a dying book. I'd taken that bungalow on Lake Windermere to get away from fast blondes and slow gin only to discover that my neighbors across the lake had a habit of living it up every other night. It's hard to say exactly where any situation begins. But looking back, I'd say this whole business started that night as I stood there looking out across the water at the lights of the forest house. And to be precise, it began when I heard my phone ringing. Yeah? Is that Mr. Kendrick? Speaking. Mr. Kendrick, you live over in that bungalow on the east side, don't you? Yeah. And you have a motor launch, I believe. I'd hardly call it a launch. Mr. Kendrick, I hope you'll forgive me for imposing on you like this, but, well, I'm in something of a jam. You see, four of our guests are stranded down at the yacht club. Our launch is broken down, and the ferry isn't running this late, and, well, there simply isn't any other way for them to get across. You want me to run your friends over in my boat, is that it? Be very kind of you. You see, we're having a party over here. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I kind of gathered that. We'll expect you in about a half an hour, then. All right. Half an hour. There must have been a dozen other people with boats on my side of the lake. But no, some character had to give her my number. Twenty minutes later, I, Ray, loomed up ahead of us looking something like a world premiere at Grauman's Chinese Theater. And then, as we started drifting slowly in toward the landing stage, I saw her. She might have been Lorelei, luring the sailors to their doom, except she wasn't combing her hair. Come along, Ducky. Let old uncle give you a hand. That's right, show it, Ignat. Liberty party ashore, Skipper. Well, come along, what about me? Oh, all right. I hope you don't mind me bringing your friend along. Carol, this is Jane. Joe? Ah, yes, of course, Joe. Well, I hope this is going to be a nice do after what we've been through. <laughs> I think you'd better all go in and get yourselves a drink. I'd say you deserve it. Ah, we're doing all. Well, come along, Jean. Let's get out of these wet rags into a dry martini, what? <laughs> Very charming of you, Mr. Uh... Kendrick. You phoned me, remember? I thought you were an American. Can I persuade you to come in and have a drink? Oh, thanks for the gesture, but I, uh, I'm not wearing my party clothes tonight. There are over a hundred people in there, Mr. Kendrick. So I don't think you need worry. Okay. Pity you're not giving a fancy dress party. I like to come as the uh, vulgar boatman. Having a wonderful time. I can see that. Great party, Carol. Seen my wife. No, did 
that you bring up? Oh, uh, I wouldn't marry you as the last man on earth. If I was the last man on earth, darling, you'd have to join in the end of the queue. Now, Mr. Kendrick, what will you have? A champagne? Uh, bourbon, if you have it. You are an American, aren't you? I'm afraid we only have Scots, huh? Uh, okay. For you, madam? Nothing, thank you. Would you like a sandwich with that? Oh, it's an idea. Uh, smoked salmon? A caviar? Chicken? Uh, no, I'll just have one of these, thanks. that the character at the piano wasn't Mr. Forrest. Women like Carol just don't look at their husbands that way. Trouble? Uh, I think I'm out of gas. Yes. Isn't it always the same? You do someone a favor and something like this happens to you. I suppose I do you a favor and let you have some gas. Oh, thanks. I haven't seen you around before, have I? No. Not that I know many of the people that come to these parties, I'm glad to say. American, aren't you? That's right. Well, thanks a lot. Okay. Here, let me pay you for it. Oh, no. Well, uh, you seem to be having a little trouble yourself. From the day I named this launch Carol, I've had nothing but trouble with it. This is your launch? Right. Well, then you must be the... Uh... Uh, that's right, I'm the husband around here. Congratulations. Yes. Come in and have a drink. I've already had a drink, thanks. Not with me, you haven't. Come on. This is about the only room in the house I can call private. I bet you wouldn't say no to a drop of bourbon. No, I wouldn't. My lawyer's over in the States at the moment. He sent me a case last week. Huh. The only thing my lawyer ever sends me is a bill. <laughs> Soda? Oh, please. By the way, I don't know your name. Mark Kendrick. Kendrick. Sounds familiar? Well, I'd like to think it was because you'd read some of my books. Only thing I ever read is a stock exchange report. <laughs> Cheers. Like a game? Okay. I'm not very good. We'll soon find out. Kendrick. Oh, yes, of course. Aren't you the fellow that's taking that little bungalow on the other side of the lake? Yeah, that's right. You better kick off. <laughs> yeah, you're not very good, are you? Oh, it suits me. One of the few pleasures I have left in life is winning at billiards. Uh, I see what you mean. I don't think I've met a writer before. I've always pictured them as arty young men with long hair. Well, I write for money, not posterity. Who's the loser, you or posterity? Both, I'm afraid. I must have this table ironed. How long do you reckon it takes you to write a book, Mr. Kendrick? Oh, I don't know. Three, four months, maybe. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And how much do you make out of it? Oh, about seven, eight hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. If it sells well. Seems a very hard way of making a living. It's the only way I know. You see that telephone? 
All I have to do is pick up the receiver, dial a number in the city, and I can make myself a couple of quick thousand. Mm, you gotta teach me that trick sometime. No, it's just that I think that too much money's liable to distort your outlook on life. Do you know what I ask myself the first time I meet somebody? What does he want out of me? And believe me, it isn't long before I'm being tapped in one way or another. Would I be interested in this little scheme, that little project? Right now, this house is full of people who owe me something. Mind you, they're friendly enough, but they don't really like me. They resent me. For being in a position to be able to help them to do something they can't do themselves, make money. And you can always give it away. Yes. The answer to that is that too much money makes you miserable. At least you can be miserable in comfort. What do you think of my wife, Mr. Kendrick? I think she's very attractive. You a friend of hers? Never met her before tonight. Mm. I just wondered, you being a writer, you see, Carol has a weakness for artists. She collects them like some people collect butterflies. Right now it's a pianist. I just wondered if his term of office wasn't coming to an end. Is that some sort of uh, keep-off warning? Because if it is, it's not necessary. Yes, I'm sorry. You see, Mr. Kendrick, I still happen to be in love with my wife. It's not very modern or sophisticated of me, but there it is. What about her? Carol? Carol's in love with Carol. Watch this shot. Very tricky. Oh. Brilliant. Positively brilliant. Oh. Do you know what time it is? I'm not even sure I know what day it is. Seven o'clock. Do you like some coffee? Black coffee. I'll see if anyone's up yet. If you'd like to go into the library, I'll organize the coffee. You know where it is? Through the dining room. All last night? I went to the pictures. There's a clever girl. This is Mark Kendrick, my daughter. How do you do? Hello. Where's Carol? Out with Vincent. Oh. That sounds like them now. If you'll excuse me. Sit down, Andy. I've had enough melodramatics these last few weeks. Stay where you are. how chilly this room can get. We've been watching the sun come up, haven't we, Vince? That's right. It was like waiting for the curtain to go up on Tannhauser. The suspense was terrific. It was wonderful, wasn't it, Vincent? Yes, Carol. Does anyone want a cigarette? Did you have a nice time last night, Mr. Kendrick? Mark and I played billiards most of the night. He's my friend for life now that I know that I can beat him. What fun you both must have had. Vince, darling, get me a drink, will you? Uh, Carol, I think I'd better be going now. I... You can go when you've brought me a drink. Now, be a good boy and don't argue, hmm? How can you do it? How can you just sit there? Andy! What's the matter with you? Have you no pride left at all? Andy! If you don't mind, keep out of matters that don't concern you. But don't concern me. 
Andrea becomes more hysterical every day. Really, I think it's about time she saw a psychiatrist. A little more discretion on your part would help. Please, Beverly. Let's not wash our dirty linen in public. I was just going anyway. Goodbye, Mrs. Forrest. Come again sometime. Bring your friends. Yeah. So long. Goodbye, Mom. Thank you, Vincent. Is this what you want? Thank you. Nothing like a good cry to work it out of your system. Take more than that to get it out of my system, I'm afraid. If he had to get married again, why did he pick on someone like her? Oh. Oh, I see. Can't be very nice for you. It isn't. must have got a very bad impression of this household. I, I guess everyone's a little tired by now. Look, I, I know it's none of my business, but why don't you take that guy out behind the barn sometime and teach him some manners? Yes. I thought of that lots of times. I don't think it'll do any good, though. Anyway, Vincent won't last long. They never do. It's a pity, in a way. That piano in the library cost me 1,200 pounds. He's the first person who's been able to play it properly. By the way, what are you doing Thursday? You're working on my book, if I know it's good for me. I'm throwing a party over at the club to christen my new boat. Think you can make it? In a jacket? You can wear a suit of armor for all I care. As I pulled away from High Ray that morning, I realized that Beverly Forrest was one of the loneliest men I'd ever met in my life. And as for Carol... Yeah. As for Carol. With some people, it's liquor. With me, it's always been women. Women like Carol Forrest. But right then, the only thing I had to worry about was finishing that book. wondering how it's coming on. I'm your agent, you know. It's my job to worry about your work, and I haven't had any news for you for weeks. Been busy. Ah, I'm glad to hear it. Are you still there? I'm still here. Now, listen. I don't want to put any pressure on, but those first three chapters, I should have had them in last Monday, you know. Wardmans have been on the phone to me on Friday. They're rather hoping to see something soon. So am I. I haven't finished the first two chapters yet. What? This isn't funny, old boy. This isn't funny at all. Look, I'm not a machine that can pump out X thousand words a day. I'm not sure I believe in it anymore. Listen, Kendrick, stop kidding yourself. You're not in a position to believe in anything but hard cash. And unless you're working some racket up there I know nothing about, the last money you ever had was in the shape of a check from Wardman's. Unless you're 10%. I shall grow rich on your 10%. Your signature is on a legal binding contract. I may be able to stall Wardman for a few more days, but they're in a position to make things very difficult if they feel like it. Besides, this kind of thing does me a lot of harm. Uh, I suppose it does. I'm sorry. I'll try to let you have something tomorrow. Now, well, let's say Friday. I know you. And don't let me down. Yeah, I won't let you down. Oh, uh, Harry, uh, what about that uh, radio script? Anything happen with it? You worry about the book. I'll worry about the script. I could use the cash, Harry. 
I can believe that. Now let's have something on Friday, huh? All right. So long. Finishing off those first three chapters couldn't have been tougher if I chiseled them out of stone. But I did it. And it was only out of respect for my agent's ulcers that I didn't toss them into the ash can where they belonged. But at any rate, it meant that for the next couple of days I could just sit around and relax. At least that's what I'd planned to do before I spotted that tall blonde showing off her torso like she knew I was watching. Then I began to figure out if there wasn't some way I could get a little closer to Carol than through a pair of binoculars. The answer, of course, was Bev's party to christen his new boat. The twist is, the closest I ever got to Carol was to pass her the salt a couple of times. The rest of the evening I spent making small talk with her stepdaughter. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to propose a toast. Jolly good show. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to drink. Yeah, yeah. To the most gracious lady, the most elegant lady I have ever known. Hey, what time is it? Time? Ten past one, Mr. Forrest. We got a Chris in the post. sleep and plenty of black coffee when he wakes up. I think he'll be all right, miss. Come on, sir. I better go and help Mason. Thank you very much, Mark. That's all right. How is he? He'll probably wake up in the morning with two heads, but I think he'll recover. Mr. Kendrick. Yes? Thank you for bringing him home. I thought it was better than leaving him lie around. You don't like me very much, do you? Not very much. It might interest you to know that there are times when I'm not crazy about myself. That I can believe. I don't suppose you'd like to have a drink before you go. Look, Mrs. Forrest, what are you trying to do? I delivered your husband. Now, what do you want me to do? Sign a receipt for him? I was just trying to be sociable. That's your trouble. You try too hard. What's the matter? Don't you like women? Would it make you feel any happier if I told you I'd fallen in love with you? Might amuse me. But that's what you want me to say, isn't it? That ever since I first laid eyes on you, I've been eating my heart out for you. And you could add another name to your list. Methinks thou dost protest too much, Mr. Kendrick. And what does that mean exactly? Ever since we first met, you've gone out of your way to make it quite clear you didn't like me. I'm beginning to wonder who you're trying to convince, me or yourself. And don't tell me I'm not your type. You're a woman, aren't you? What more do you want? We have something in common after all. Yeah. That's the word. Come. 
common. How are you going to get home, Mr. Kendrick? I'm borrowing your husband's car. Good night, Mrs. Forrest. But I was just kidding myself. That kiss him and leave him routine hadn't fooled anyone. Least of all me. Yeah? Hello, Mark. Where have you been? Oh, hello, Harry. I've been trying to catch you all day. Listen, old boy, who did you get to write this stuff? Because you'll never convince me that you wrote it yourself. Why, what's the matter with it? What's the matter with it? Boardmans have rejected it. That's what's the matter with it. Oh, sounds bad. Sounds bad? It is bad. They are talking of cancelling your contract. They can't do that. They can, you know, and I think they will, unless I can do something to stop it. I'm seeing them tomorrow at 4 o'clock. I think you better be here. Do I have to? What's the matter? Don't you like eating anymore? Okay. I'll take the 10.15. 4 o'clock at my office. How is it? You sure you've taken the needle out? Uh, what are you doing to yourself? Good morning. I'm trying to kill himself, that's what. I've warned him before, but of course he takes no notice of what I say. I'm just a country quack. That's right. He looks healthy enough to me. Yes, cardiac cases usually do. But he isn't healthy. It's time he got used to the idea. I'm telling you straight, Beverly. I'm telling you for the last time. Ease up. Just ease up. That's yes, all. Yes, yes, I know. We've been all over that before. Why don't you run along? You depress me. I gave up a perfectly good game of golf to come and give you advice. Seems to me I'm wasting my time. Maybe you don't want to live. I'll come round again tomorrow. I'll see you out, Doctor. What's all this about? That old fool thinks I'm going to kick out any minute. He seems to know what he's talking about. All right. So what am I supposed to do? Sit in the corner and wait for the end? How long have you known about this? Oh, a couple of years. First, they said I had ten years to go if I was careful. And last year, they made it five. Now it's down to a year. A year? That's right. And they'd only guarantee that if I lived like a monk. No drink, no exercise, no excitement. And none of these. Oh, he's still around. Well, there's one consolation. When I go, he goes too. What do you mean? Oh, you don't think Carol's gonna sit around and wait for him to win a lottery or something, do you? No, Carol goes where the money is. She has an instinct for it. But what about your... What about my money? Well, they say you can't take it with you. Well, believe me, I'm not gonna leave it lying around. At least not where Carol can get her hands on it. I don't mind paying her bills while I'm alive. I'm certainly not going to pay them when I'm dead. I've been thinking about this for some time, and last night's bit of nonsense clinched it. When my lawyer gets back from the States, I'm going to alter my will. I'll see that Carol doesn't get one penny more than she's legally entitled to. I, uh, I gotta be going. I suppose you think I'm pretty mean. It's a pretty mean sort of world. How about having dinner with me tonight? I'm going up to London. Oh, but you'll be back Saturday, won't you? I'm taking the new boat through a place on Saturday. I'd like you to be there. You're going out in that speedboat in your condition. Why not? Yeah. As you say, why not? All right, I'll be there.
didn't laugh. I didn't think it was funny at the time. You, outside. I beg your pardon. I'd like to speak with Mrs. Forrest alone, so if you don't mind. Well, but I do mind. I refuse to be ordered around. Darling, nobody's ordering you around. Mr. Kendrick is just naturally rude, that's all. Be a good boy and leave us alone for five minutes. You say so, Carol, all right. What is it you want, Mr. Kendrick? It's about Beverly. What about him? He's ill, you know that, don't you? Yes, I know. Don't you think you ought to do something about it? Such as? Well, at least you could go and see him. He can't be very happy by himself. You forget that Beverly and I aren't speaking. If he wants something, he only has to ring the bell. That's not what I mean, and you know it. What do you mean? You don't care whether he lives or dies, do you? Don't you think you owe him something? You mean that it's the duty of a wife to be by her husband's side when he needs her? <laughs> I'm not that kind of a wife, and Beverly never expected me to be. We signed a contract. Beverly fulfilled his part of the bargain, and believe me, I fulfilled mine. If Beverly is complaining, I'm not. I've got what I want. Well, enjoy it while you can, Mrs. Forrest, because I've got a feeling you're not going to have it much longer. gentlemen. Mr. Kendrick is not an amateur. He is not a beginner. His books have sold well in the past. They are going to sell well in the future. And if you'd care to be more specific in your objections, I'm quite certain that my client would be only too pleased to rewrite these first three chapters. Uh, but let's face it, gentlemen, a writer is a creative mind and not a machine that can pump out X thousand words a day. Now, in my opinion, gentlemen, there is nothing wrong with the material that my client has submitted so far. Well, that's that. Sorry, Mark. I did my best. Yes, I know. Thanks. So, now we find another publisher. So now you find another publisher. You mean you want out? I'm afraid so, boy. Well, I... I'd better get to the office. So long. Sorry, I had to end like this. I, uh, I suppose you, uh, you couldn't let me have some money, could you? How much? Five would help. It's as bad as that. It's as bad as that. Thanks, I'll, uh, let you have it back sometime. Any idea what you're going to do? Well, I made one friend. He might help me, I don't know. Well, good luck, then. I was flat, finished. No prospects, no money, and no hope of getting any. Unless... What was it Beverly had said? Sooner or later, everybody wants something from him. Number, please. Lakeside, five, two, three. This is Mark Kendrick. Well, hello. Can I speak to Beverly, please? You could if he was here, but he's in Manchester with Andrea. They won't be back until tomorrow. Was it something important? Yes, but it'll keep. OK, Mrs. Forrest, thanks. Uh, Mr. Kendrick. Yeah? I'd like to see you. Tonight? Getting the creeps in this place all by myself. <laughs> you could get up a game of canasta with the butler. Why don't you come over and have a drink? Well, if you're by yourself, it's not a very good idea, is it? All right, then let's go somewhere else. What about the club? Well, isn't that just a little public? Who cares? 
I do. I'll pick you up in the car in a half an hour. Okay. Don't sound so enthusiastic. All right, in a half an hour. I knew what I'd be walking into. What did surprise me was that for the first time I saw a side of Carol I'd never even suspected. So I got a modeling job advertising bathing suits. For two years I did everything but stand on my head in the bathing suit. I decided I'd had enough of that, so I got myself a job advertising toothpaste. And what was I wearing? A tube of toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? That's the first time I've ever seen you laugh. Oh, you know something? There hasn't been very much to laugh at lately. Oh, by the way, uh, what's happened to uh, Vincent? Vincent? I got bored with Vincent. We had a row, and that's the end of that. Exit Vincent. Exit Vincent. Is it like that? I'm afraid so. Got a pen? Is that what you want to see Beverly about? Because if it is, you're wasting your time. Go to him with a business proposition and he'll listen to you. Ask him for the loan of hard cash and suddenly he becomes very deaf. <laughs> I've always had plenty out of him, but never in real money. Send him the bill, yes. Charge it to his account, the sky's the limit. But ask for the price of a cab fare. So if I were you, I'd forget it. Shall we go? Thank you. Good night. Hello there. Fancy seeing you. Fancy. We were just going. Oh, uh, oh this is Marilyn. At least that's what I call her, don't I, Ducky? Uh, how about a drink? Some other time, Craig. Oh, later on, perhaps. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, so long. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do, will you? We would have to run into him. Frank? <laughs> He's all right. The trouble with you, Mark, is that you worry too much. Maybe. Hey, shouldn't you have turned off back there? I thought I'd drop you off at your place. fix a light. Don't bother about the lights. I like it the way it is. Do you still hate me? You know I don't. It's your move. Bev must be having himself a time out there. Tell me who! Well, hello there. What happened to you two last night? I thought you said you were coming back to the club. We waited half the night for you. Where were you, eh? Is that Bev? What's he trying to do? They're brand new engines. They're seize up. Hey, Bev!
all right. Frank's just gone out to get him. What's the matter? Just now, out there, I, I had the most awful thought. I was hoping he wasn't going to come back. You're leaving, aren't you? What does it look like? Why, Mark? You just can't figure that out, can you? I've fallen in love with you. That hasn't been too difficult for me to figure out. You're not running away from me. You're running away from yourself. All the same, I intend to start running before it's too late. What do you mean, too late? I thought I knew what made you tick right from the start. I knew you were no good, but I didn't realize until today how bad you really are. Because I told the truth for a change? You know as well as I do that Beverly has much longer to live. Today, tomorrow, what's the difference? All we have to do is wait. I'm afraid you're going to have to wait for a long time, Carol. What are you talking about? Beverly's not leaving you a cent more than he legally has to. He's cutting you right out of his will. I don't believe it. His lawyer's in the States right now, isn't he? He's coming back next week. Well, that doesn't leave you much time, does it? Time? Time to devise some bright little scheme to help Beverly on his way out. No, Mark, no! Oh, it wouldn't really be murder, would it? After all, Beverly's going to die anyway. Stop it, Mark! Stop it! I won't listen to you! Now do you see why I'm pulling out? It was like one of those nightmares when you're trying to get away from something. And the faster you run, the closer it gets. And just when you think you've made it. Was that the London train? It was. Well, when's the next one? Ain't another train before in the morning. Well, what do I have to do to get out of this town? Dig a tunnel? If the bus goes to Keswick, leaves you about 10 tonight. Oh, that's great. Tells me you're leaving. I'm trying to. Is it because of her? Frank told me. I'm sorry. I tried, Beth. Believe me. I know, son. I'm only sorry it had to be you, that's all. Anyway, uh, that doesn't matter anymore now. Well, you can't hang around here. There's nothing to do. The next bus isn't till 10. Don't I know? I'll tell you what, how about you and me having a little farewell party, huh? Oh, not another party, Ben. Just the two of us. We'll probably never see each other again. What'll I do with these? Don't worry about that. Ted, pick it off to this, will you? Come on. Right on, Mr. Boyd. You don't seriously think we're going to do any fishing? Who said anything about fishing? <laughs> <laughs> well, where do you want this stuff? You'll find a nice box in the cabin. Okay. Hello, Bev. Where are you going? Fishing. Mind if I go along? Do you have to? Don't worry, I won't get in the way. Did you say something? Going on a sort of farewell trip. Mark's leaving tonight. Yes, I know. You better cast off. I'll start her up. It was one of those sultry afternoons when everything seemed to have come to a stop. The lake was like a dead sea. The clouds hung over us like shrouds, and everything seemed to be waiting. Not for me, thanks. 
You're unlucky anyway. What's the matter with these fish? Hey, fish! Fishy, fishy! Come on, boys. Fishy, fishy! I don't know how long I must have dozed, but when I woke up, the lake had faded out of sight like something in a dream. If we get a move on, we might beat this mist. What do you know about this? Did you ever see anything so quick? It does that around here. It comes down the mountains. We're used to it. Would you like to take over? I'll go tidy up off. In this fog? Just keep her on that course. She won't go wrong. Take it easy. It's your boat. Better go up to the house. There was some blood on the deck. I cleaned it up. What do we do now, Mark? What do you think we're going to do? Give me the police. I want to report an accident. And you searched around for an hour and could see no sign of him. That's right. Well, it's too dark to do anything now. I'll have some men drag that part of the lake tomorrow. I'll uh, drop her over again in the morning, if you don't mind. Of course not. Can I give you a lift to the other side, Mr. Kendrick? Uh, no, no, thanks. 
All right. Good night, Mrs. Forrest. Miss Forrest. Good night, Mr. Kendrick. I'll uh, see you to the door. Andrea, we did everything we could. I'm sure you did. Darling, it was just one of those things. It, it was a sort of accident that could have happened to anyone. Accident? By the following morning, the mist had lifted from the lake. And as I headed toward High Ray, I could see them dragging for Beth's body. Kendrick. Yes? I'm Detective Inspector McLennan. Oh? Nothing to be alarmed at, Mr. Kendrick. The local police like to have us in on these matters, especially with a man as important as Mr. Forrest. I see. Did you come over to see Mrs. Forrest? Yes. Well, we'll go up together, shall we? But you didn't actually see him fall overboard? No. I had a word this morning with the skipper of that ferry you bumped into. Uh, do you mind? Not at all. Mind you, we don't pay too much attention to witnesses. Their eyes are often bigger than their heads. But this man says that he saw everything. According to him, Mr. Forrest Lost his balance and fell over all right. But he didn't fall over the side. He must have had pretty good eyesight in that fog. Yes. Yes, that's what I thought. Are you suggesting, Inspector, that we haven't been telling you the truth? I'm not suggesting anything, Mrs. Forrest. It's just my job to probe around, that's all. Well. What's that? I think they've found your husband, Mrs. Forrest. The following day, the coroner's court returned a verdict of accidental death. I've got to talk to you. Not here, not now. When? You know it's dangerous for us to be seen together, Mark. Dangerous or not, I've got to see you. All right, I'll meet you at your place tonight. to drop in on you like this. What do you want? I'm busy. I shan't keep you long. Going, Mr. Kendrick? Oh, come. Now, look, McLennan. There was an accident. The man was killed. This morning, a coroner's jury returned a verdict of accidental death. As far as I'm concerned, I'd like to forget the whole unpleasant business. Yes, I'm sure you would, Mr. Kendrick. So would I. As soon as I've tied up one or two loose ends, you mean you're not satisfied with the finding of the inquest? I'm in no position to question the coroner's verdict, you know. Then what are you doing here? Did you get that? Probing, Mr. Kendrick. Just probing. There's been gossip, you know, about Mrs. Forrest. Of course, you know what I mean. No, I don't. You don't? Well, apparently she's made no secret of the fact that she's been having affairs with other men. I wouldn't know about that. That's curious, because I'd heard that you were one of the other men. All right, McLennan, you've said your little piece. I suppose you get out of here. Very well, that's how you feel about it. By the way, Mr. Kendrick, I forgot to tell you, I was taking another look at that launch this afternoon. I found some blood on the afterdeck. 
Not much. Not much, but had me puzzled all the same. Good night. What did he want? What do policemen usually want? Do you think he suspects anything? Of course he suspects something. Why else would he be snooping around? I told you I shouldn't have come here tonight. Now he's seen us together What's and the he... difference? He knew about it anyway. How? How do I know? Someone told him, I guess. Andrea. Maybe it was Andrea. What was that he said about finding blood on the deck? If Bev fell over the side the way we said he did, there wouldn't be any blood on the deck, would there? I thought you took care of that. Of course I took care of it. What do you think I am, an imbecile? But the police have instruments for that sort of thing. Mark, whatever made us do it, there must have been some other way. It's a little late for that now. But if that detective suspects something... You must go away, Mark. Get away from here where they can't find you. Then when everything's settled, I'll come to you. But if I go away now, they'll really suspect something. They might if we left together, but if you leave now, they'll think there never was anything between us. It won't be for long. Just as soon as I can get all the tedious details settled about the will and the money. And well, how long is all that going to take? A month at the outside. And then we'll be together again. And nothing will have changed between us. I'll need you then just as much as I need you now. And everything we've been through these past few weeks will have been worth it. Oh, my darling, believe me, it will. All right. I'll go back to town. And you will wait for me, won't you? Of course I'll wait for you. And so, I waited. As the weeks went by, I came to know that dreary little hotel room as intimately as a lifer gets to know his cell. At the end of the sixth week, I wrote to Carol, thinking perhaps she had mislaid my address. And then, when I got no reply... Did you say Lakeside 523, caller? That's right. Even as I stepped out onto the landing stage, I knew that High Ray was deserted. Don't you know? You don't give up, do you? Not very easily. Oh, shall we be getting along? I have a car outside. You're going to arrest me? On what charge? I haven't got a case against you, Kendrick, and you know it. I thought perhaps I could give you a lift somewhere. Mark. What is this? What's the idea? Miss Forrest believes in you, Kendrick. She doesn't think you did it. Did what? What are you talking about? I know you didn't. It was Carol, wasn't it, Mark? It was an accident. Carol killed my father and used you to cover up for her. You don't know what you're talking about. Mark, listen to me. Carol's guilty of murder and you're shielding her. 
Just because you imagine she's in love with you, you can't let her get away with it. She's not worth it. Well, what do you want me to do, make a confession or something? I think you'd better get into the car. Carol Forrest, didn't you? I'll see this young lady home. I think I'll know where to find you. we have to meet sooner or later. That was the idea. What happened? I changed my mind. You seem to forget, Carol. We're both guilty of murder. And that's something that ties us together for good, whether we like it or not. Things have changed, Mark. I have everything I want right here. And believe it or not, for the first time in my life, I'm really happy. What about us? I thought we made a bargain. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Ralph. You what? Go to the police? You wouldn't do anything that stupid now, would you? And please take your hands off my wife. Your wife? We were married three weeks ago. It's very simple. I'm in love with Vincent. I always have been. Does he know? Does he know we killed a man? Does he know that? Of course he knows. I suppose the job was too messy for him. Get out. I feel better now. You're not going to get away with this, Carol. I've already gotten away with it. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Isn't there? I think there is. You've forgotten one thing, Carol. Now I've got nothing to lose. Mark, wait a minute. Mark, listen to me. You can't go to the police. You're too involved. They'll hang you, Mark. Mark! Mark! You don't really mean it. You aren't going to the police, are you? Mark, listen to me! I'll do anything you want. If it's money you want, it is money you want, isn't it? Mark, are you out of your mind? Do you know what they'll do? What you, you said you still feel both guilty. They'll hang you! Did you hear what I said? They'll hang you! Well, there you are. That's the way it went. Not a very pretty story, is it? No. Not very. Maybe I, I should have kept it to myself. You think you could? Sooner or later, you'd have had to tell somebody. Yeah. I guess you're right. Well, shall we go? Yes. <laughs> 